Hello everybody, I'd like to welcome you on today's webinar about Unified Endpoint Management, Enterprise Mobility Evolved. Today's presenter is Kevin Restivo. My name is Christina Schumann and I'm the Marketing Manager of PAC. If you have any questions regarding the topic or the webinar, don't hesitate to ask the questions in the right box on the right hand side. Kevin will answer your questions after the webinar. So, I'd like to welcome Kevin um, and I'm happy to hear something new. Uh, good afternoon, good evening and good morning to all those in attendance, uh, wherever you're located. Thank you for the introduction, Christina, and thank you for joining the webinar called Unified Endpoint Management Enterprise Mobility Evolved. I'll be your host and presenter for the next 30 to 40 minutes, after which we'll have a Q&A session, as Christina mentioned. I'm keen to tell you more about what we've observed on the burgeoning topic of Unified Endpoint Management, of course. So first, I'd like to review the agenda for the presentation. So let's get going, as we have a decent amount of ground to cover. Okay, and so we'll cover uh, a number of topics uh, again over the next uh, 20 to 30 minutes, including the following. So mobile enterprise needs and expectations. So what are the needs of the enterprise and the challenges it's facing when it comes to enterprise mobility today? Just like individuals that comprise the organizations that we're discussing, uh, there are needs. And, and those that mean, which means some of those needs, if not all of them, need to be met in order for the organization to function properly and for mobility to be incorporated properly. So this is typically not an easy task, but with awareness of the issue comes solutions in the form of enterprise mobility. And there's an evolution to discuss as well too. So what is the mobile enterprise? And how did we get to the point where unified endpoint management is a topic of interest to end user organizations and uh, technology suppliers and service providers alike? And, and so that leads to the, the actual topic itself. So we'll cover off the most recent mobility-driven solutions from tech vendors to help some of the most uh, uh, mobility-aware organizations and what they're offering today. And, and of course, that is the topic of the, the, the actual subject of the, the webinar, which, was, which is UEM. So while many companies, companies are still grappling or working with pure mobile device management, which we'll define and discuss a bit later, if they're working with it at all, solutions have evolved that incorporate a broader range of solutions to help organizations with solutions to, to manage enterprise assets on a mobile basis. And we'll talk also about the companies that are doing it. So, uh, so UEM, even more so than its predecessor, Enterprise Mobility Management, has, made, has become a crowded market because of the promise of it and the, the omnipresent issue that organizations are having with these various assets and devices and anytime, anywhere data. And so, and then finally, we'll talk about, uh, as Christina mentioned, some uh, recommendations and conclusions, and then we'll have a Q&A session as well, too. Uh, so some points to think about afterwards, after the presentation. Well, let's, let's first start with, again, the needs of the organization. And so enterprises, again, are really groups of people organized to sell goods and services for a profit, at least in the private sector. They're no different than individuals in the sense that the, these needs are present. So as such, it's important enterprises recognize and meet as many of these needs as possible, within reason, of course. And so there are a number of ways you can look at the needs and the maturation of enterprises in Europe or elsewhere um, as it relates to, uh, as those organizations uh, relate to enterprise mobility or mobile solutions. And one way to frame those needs and the maturation of enterprises is with Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So why are we talking about a psychologist, as Abraham Maslow is? He's a noted American psychologist of the 1950s. I'm certainly not here to provide a lecture on psychology or Maslow either, but his hierarchy of needs remains relevant today, which is why it came to mind recently when I thought about the mobility needs of companies. But instead of using the five categories and segments that Maslow created to describe people's needs, there are really three general categories for the purposes of enterprises and enterprise mobility that you see before you that, that we can help frame the problem uh, or help frame the, the sort of maturation of mobile enterprises within. And so the first being mo basic mobile enablement that you see at the bottom of the pyramid. And then as you work your way up, mobile productivity and then the actual mobile enterprise. And, and those relate 
you know, roughly, I think there's some parallels with, with Maslow and the way he's described people's needs. So, in other words, the greater the awareness and the higher the level of investment, the like in, in mobility, the likelier a truly mobile enterprise state is reached, meaning a, a great form of, or a high form of self-actualization. And so there are a variety of characteristics that you see pictured before you that make this so. But if we start with the most basic of needs of an organization, starting from the bottom of the pyramid, um, that is pure enablement, pure mobile enablement. The reason why that, it, that is to be, it, that, that is so for enterprises today is that there are basic mobility needs that have to be satisfied. And, be, and that's because mobility is an everyday part of business. There's no way around it, even if it's basic uh, email or calendar access that we're talking about, organizations must deal with this in one way or another. Now, as organizations look to co-opt the technology and, and make mobility a, a productivity driver, uh, that means making mobile infrastructure ready that, uh, for such technologies. That means, that means app evaluation, the establishment of bring your own device, or what's more commonly known as BYOD, and re-evaluation re of the security that, that comes with all of this and, and the needs there. Now, there's a, for a true mobile enterprise, though, there, there are many characteristics with companies uh, that, that are shared with the companies that, that are in more of a mobile productivity state. Now the differences though are really about data and app readiness, which is one of the prominent problems that UEM uh, helps or is designed to help manage rather that we'll get into a little bit later. But the security and the accessibility of data and applications, including legacy apps built in pre previous generations needs to be dealt with. And these are pertinent distinctions to make as it helps frame and user organizations, again, state of actualization when it comes to mobility. You'll find many companies you'll find are still trying to become truly mobile enterprises. Uh, and there are good reasons for that. <clears throat> and enterprises, part of the reason why is that people's expectations of the workplace and what they can do in it are greater than ever today and vice versa. In other words, businesses increasingly want people to be not just accessible but have the ability to make the same decisions and do the same type of things they do if they're at the office. But therein lies the issue for the company. And this is, this is so as mobile enterprises as they've been framed are on the rise with the advent and advancement of mobile computing globally. So businesses, businesses and people are managing more devices than than ever, and it's the expectation is that they'll be able to use those devices and screens as they see fit. And, and so mobile computing has fundamentally changed the way people communicate with one another in their environments. The byproduct of mobile computing today is that the difference between work and personal lives is now blurrier than ever. So innovation in the mobile space has done this. It's changed the way people are computing and transformed the way we interact with, with each other and the world around us. That's because of ubiquitous fast connect connectivity, which means proper access is no longer the issue. And another driving factor is of the greater expectations of people when it comes to mobile technology has been the tremendous innovation, of course, in the device space with smartphones, tablets, and other connected devices being more prominent in our lives than ever. And so with more people connected, cloud-based mobile applications have, have exploded, of course, and this has given people a simple, intuitive way to access information immediately on a personal level, whether it's weather, purchases made, or simply connecting with friends and family. And so this innovation has created new computing experiences that transcend personal and business use cases. So while previously technology depended on how familiar you were with a particular device or an application, uh, now information on your world and your contacts is easily accessible. But it's also made IT management and enablement of employees a much more difficult and complicated task, given the fact there are many more dimensions to account for. And so control of devices and data was arguably easier to maintain by IT when that one-size-fits-all model that you see before you was more the norm. And now, since mobility has made, pe has made people more aware, agile, and responsive, there are real implications for the enterprise as it has dramatically changed our expectations at work, which necessitates a change of IT management style to more of that user-centric approach that you see before you. That's the thinking at least. So why shouldn't we expect the same experience at work as in our personal lives? 
but making that experience a reality has its challenges. Now, that's not to say progress hasn't been made. The world, in fact, is getting there, as I think about it, and as most people think about it. We know that mobile solutions can, and can increase, can provide increased productivity for the workforce um, in the ways that you see before you. Uh, but we know it can help improve organizational performance, for example, and ultimately help a company be more effective in service and customer needs. Uh, it's a question of execution, though. So what is possible, in other words, hasn't always been doable. And that's because up to now, mobile solutions have been a significant headache to IT because of the risks and sometimes limited capabilities of the technology itself. So in other words, connecting devices outside of the network is inherently risky and expose data in transit or increase the risk to the company because of a lost device or the theft of a device. And so that's made companies reticent, and it's, it's also slowed down uh, the progress. If, if companies are to real drive productivity through mobility, uh, there's been reticence because of some of those issues as well, too. And so the management of those devices is part of the issue, and the different applications for IT, particularly uh, and, and rolling those out, has been difficult when you're dealing with less headcount, for example, if companies cut back on resources and doesn't have the budget it needs. So when IT's core responsibility is to simply to keep the network up and running and healthy, mobility has been, has, has been often seen as just too difficult to implement or, again, too costly. So current approaches to enterprise mobility attempt to solve some of those issues that I've, I've mentioned with one-offs, if you will, so forcing the IT department to manage several vendors, which is a whole other set of problems. In other words, trying to right, right size point solutions for an entire workforce. And that just causes further havoc in the IT environment and causes, again, companies to exercise caution. And so the result is that gap that I've mentioned between the harsh reality of IT requirements and the promise of enterprise mobility as a productivity driver. So on the next slide, you'll see the result of some of those efforts to date that illustrate the state of affairs in the past. <laughs> and it's, uh, Hopefully that screaming man you see before you doesn't represent uh, anyone's hunger level at the moment or it hasn't caused anybody to look like that because of their hunger at the moment. I'm assuming that at this time of day everyone listening and watching the webinar has eaten lunch. Uh, but whether that's the case or not, the point of this, of this slide is really to show you the visceral reaction of, of IT managers in the past and, and, and others in companies that have uh, had a, a complex ma uh, management task of devices or, or mobility before them. And so managing that innovation boom that I've already mentioned um, has been a challenge for IT teams, of course. And in some instances, the reason that this is is because IT policy simply can't keep pace with the explosion, the proliferation of consumer technology, uh, devices, whatever, that have, been, that have to be managed that are inside the, that by companies and the people within them. Uh, in, any, in many cases, though, employees use these devices regardless of policy. And so while this usage increases the risk uh, that we talked about. The usage can also drive productivity and enables people to manage that uh, integration of, of work and, and, and personal life and often increases their, their contributions to their functional teams. But again, that throat, the threat to security of not only the enterprise and employee data is omnipresent. But given the, the mix of devices and usage, the constraints of IT teams and the propensity for employees to use unapproved and secured endpoints, the traditional IT model of using different point products for different endpoints can be ineffective and inefficient. So having a separate mobile management, server management, laptop and desktop solutions causes gaps to open up in, in the security posture of the organization. And that could be in part to the miscommunication between different IT management teams, errors or oversight in applying patches or configuration management or simply due to the lack of visibility into every device that connects to the corporate data network or whoever is trying to access data. So what that means is that there's an imminent need to shift the focus of simple device management to managing the actual user and how they can access corporate data rather than the device used, much to the frustration of the person you see before you. Uh, but before that organization can manage the user access, it first needs to ensure that the various tools that are used to manage the diversity of endpoints that exist today are consolidated. Emphasis on the word consolidated. This first step of consolidation is, is achieved by developing a single unified solution that can securely manage 
these various types of endpoints that break down the silos created by the need for different end, endpoint tools that exist today. And that's given rise to what is the next wave of device and enterprise mobility management known as unified endpoint management. So if your company really want to have that, again, that uniform way to manage the many client devices in an intelligent way, whether it's PCs or phones, smartwatches, or even cars and refrigerators down the road, IT has been looking for that quote unquote single pane of glass. In other words, the ideal solution to the problem of management uh, and, and getting the most out of mobility for years now. And there are different ways to define that broad rubric, if you will, of unified endpoint management. Generally, the objective is full lifecycle management of all types of enterprise devices. UEM is really the latest promise to do so for companies that have, uh, for those of you in the audience that have been around for some time. Now, depending on the enterprise and the industry vertical, managing all or most of these device types is absolutely mission critical for the reasons that we've discussed. Now, to make it more complex, the, the capabilities, the processes needed for full lifecycle management for each of these device types is very different. Fragmentation of those efforts so that policies are not repeated or applied differently is the enemy. Those are the requirements of the company. So using one managed platform, one management platform, excuse me, to, to incorporate and, and oversee the many devices and deploy them to the company's advantage is what companies are faced with now, um, and that's the goal. So in short, companies see UEM as a desire. It is a desire, whereas vendors, technology vendors, UEM has largely been an aspiration to date. UEM isn't really a new concept. It's, it's, it's an amalgamation of two solutions which were frankly inevitable given market maturation and company needs. So what, in other words, client management, the effective control of more traditional endpoints such as PCs, laptops, and enterprise mobility management, which is the evolved form of mobile de device management, which handle the control of mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets. So all these device types can be, can be classified simply as endpoints with BYOD and the Internet of Things beginning to take root, or have already taken root, uh, UEM tools are going to be synonymous with future growth. Now on the next slide, we'll delve a bit deeper into the specific reasons and the, and the benefits for adoption of such solutions. I mean, there, there are, there's a long laundry list of advantages that UEM brings to companies in theory. And this is very early days for adoption of UEM. There are many reasons why UEM, though, is being regarded as that solution to, to the management problem uh, that I've noted. And some of them you see before you, uh, the, the cost savings, of course, and the management and security we've gone over, elimination of security gaps. Uh, but the end result, really, is that is, is companies trying to bring that single pane of glass over and, and bringing all the, the management of all the devices uh, under one umbrella or one roof, if you will. And that's been, that, that is IT nirvana in many ways and uh, has, has eluded companies and, and end user organizations for the most part to date. Nonetheless, some the, uh, suppliers have evolved their portfolios and tried to solve that problem over the years. And on the supply side, companies are, are growing their solutions to, to capture the opportunity because it is such an, a big problem. And so mobile device management is, is where it all started, and, that's, and companies are, are moving on from that. Uh, the suppliers, the, many of the suppliers that we'll talk about have moved from that pure enablement of, uh, of organizations from an MDM perspective uh, to ensure that, simply to ensure that corporate policies are, are, are breached. Uh, many organizations are, have employed MDM today uh, and are, are using it to control activities of their employees vis-a-vis uh, -vis MDM products and services, as I noted on the Maslow's hierarchy of, of needs slide. But MDM primarily deals with corporate data segregation, security of emails, securing corporate documents on device, and enforcement of corporate policies, uh, and integrating and managing mobile devices, as I, as I noted on, the, on the, the needs slide. But user needs have evolved, of course. So vendor solutions have followed or even predicated end user organization demand. And that led to EMM, as you see before you, the, the enterprise mobility suites, 
which are still mostly separate from traditional endpoint management, but incorporates MDM along with application management and oftentimes content management as well too. Uh, and most organizations today realize that some component, if not e the entire EMM suite is necessary, but it's no longer as simple as grabbing the best in, in class vendor tools and rolling those out. Uh, and so as a result, the EMM market has, has really matured quickly and it's uh, all prominent vendors in it have moved well beyond just the management of devices to offering those other components of the suites that I mentioned already. And so there are a broad range of solution components that make up these suites. Uh, and the enablement of the enterprise's vendors focusing now on strong authentication solutions, granular app level policy controls, network access controls, all the, all the while trying to preserve that user experience that uh, end users are accustomed to on mobile, making the task all the more complicated. So vendors are evolving, given that interest from end users, in complete endpoint management now, the UEM portion that you see is, the, if you're looking from left to right, as the, the current uh, sort of goal or, or where direction that the vendors are heading in. So then, uh, what that means is the vendors are looking to deliver a consistent, secure endpoint experience irrespective of device ownership and location. That's the ultimate goal. Now for end user organizations, choosing between these solutions is tougher than ever because it requires them to know what EMM, what UEM is actually going to be used for when so much of this is in flux, whether it's today or whether it's five years from now. But one thing we know for sure is that EMM is going to be the management and UEM is going to be the management of, of really everything in, the, in an EMM style, whether it's laptops or Internet of Things. Uh, vendors are all going to address the problem in one way, shape, or form. And so who are these players enabling the market, though, that are trying to convince and user organizations that UEM is a problem and, it's, uh, and that their solutions are an appropriate way to manage it. Uh, and so let's take a look at some of the suppliers, or the groups of suppliers here. And really you have four groups of vendors that, uh, before you that are there to give you an idea of how many vendors are really, and the classes thereof that are looking to enable enterprises with the, the holy grail of unified endpoint management, if you will. And you can divide, but really, you can divide the supply side into two groups for the sake of simplicity, as opposed to the four here, just to restate it, or restate it another way, thinking of EMM vendors. And so these are the vendors that have attempted to expand their reach beyond simple device management to include traditional PCs, uh, laptops, uh, so that there's a full range of mobile devices uh, that under their purview or that the, their solutions can help manage. Uh, now, so those PC, those PC management capabilities have traditionally been minimal, but there are also gaps, in, and there have been gaps in platform support. Uh, but now there's a, a full range of devices that are being uh, managed by those companies. And they're really system management vendors as well, too, as another class of companies that uh, has, has grown, has emerged to address the problem. And these, have been, uh, these, these types of vendors, the likes of uh, uh, IBM or VMware, for example, or Microsoft, have, have really are coming at the, the market from a different angle. They're attempting to add the mobile management capabilities, as you can imagine, whether it's through or, uh, acquisition or through organic product development. Uh, but keeping pace with the change in the mobile market has been extremely difficult for them. It's not to say they have an inherent disadvantage, but they're looking at the, the, the market from a different uh, perspective and are, are keeping pace with mobile and are, are uh, trying to do so via the means that I, I noted. So they're merging on-prem deployments and they're having two-year release cadences uh, with cloud-based and quarterly releases. And, and that, that's been a lot for them. Um, so that's that group of vendors. And so what, is this, what does the future of, of UEM for enterprises really mean? So uh, it's, it's on a collision course. The, 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 the market is on a collision course with IoT. And so we talk about them now as separate markets. Uh, mobile devices managed by the likes of Mobile Iron or SAP or you know, name your, your company that offers a, an EMM solution, uh, but given the proliferation of the connected devices and the Internet of, uh, of everything, the Internet of Things, uh, we, we expect very much the, for, those mar for UEM to have to manage those IoT solutions, and, and thus those two markets uh, are, are coming together in many ways, and UEM will, will have to uh, uh, 
grapple with the IoT and, and the, the organizations and, and, and the verticals that are going to benefit the most uh, are those in the, at least immediately are manufacturing, retail, and logistics. Those are likely to be early adopters, even though if they're not the traditional early uh, traditional big spenders on technology, and that's simply because they have the most to gain, and they're already dealing with the complexity of the problem right now. Uh, but it's not just a question of, like any enterprise technology, enterprise software, it's not simply a matter of, uh, uh, there's no silver bullet. In other words, companies need to uh, incorporate the solution with also people and processes in mind as well too. So it's, it's really part of an overall transformation and that's why enterprise mobility is often thought of as digital transformation because you need that consulting and to work, you need people and the processes to be uh, aligned with the technology as well too. And as far as act, actual recommendations for those of you in the IT supplier community that are, that are on the line, uh, there are a number of ways to, uh, I think, basic introductory recommendations to take away, and that uh, and UEM is, the, is the, the here and the now, but it's also the, even more so the future, and so positioning your wares as, as unified endpoint management solutions and incorporating, uh, thinking about all connected devices within an enterprise, not just mobile phones or smartphones is, is essential, and uh, ensuring that it, it not just enables uh, companies at a basic level, but it also helps drive productivity is key as well too. And then having the, uh, and the mobile first EMM vendors uh, have to expand their wares. It's either by acquisition or by sheer product development, which is much tougher given the capital cost involved and the sheer manpower, uh, the people it needed to, to do so. So those, those companies, the likes of Mobile Iron are already doing so, uh, but need to, to continue to maintain that pace if they're to stay ahead of the market and, and ensure that companies aren't necessarily going with uh, their, their competitors, which may not be necessarily best of breed. And we've already talked about the manufacturing and the retail and logistics verticals, but UEM demand growing there uh, for, different, for the reasons we've discussed. So ensuring uh, resources are aligned to properly target uh, companies where endpoint management is, uh, that problem is particularly acute. Uh, and for the end users on the line, the companies that are using, buying and using the technology, in other words, the people within those companies, uh, there's, there are more options than ever and, and more options to have that single pane of glass, but having that proof of concept uh, in place, you know, visible, is, is key because a lot of these solutions uh, are somewhat early days, uh, whether it's you know, native, uh, native APIs built into Windows 10, for example. Uh, EMM style management, though, is, has incorporating all those endpoints, so uh, it's, it's an option for those, for those organizations to be aware of it, and you don't necessarily have to go the best of breed route anymore to, to have uh, everything under one roof. But first and foremost, understanding what your needs are. Uh, the big drink may not be necessary right now if you're looking at the range of solutions you may have to manage in future or use to enable productivity. Uh, the, the need may not be as pressing, so you can maybe take the smaller drink as opposed to the bigger drink right now. So those are some basic introductory recommendations. And then just in conclusion, I'd like to uh, resum or summarize the, the, the points, the major points that we've gone over. Uh, so companies clearly have varying levels of enterprise mobility needs and levels of actualization. Uh, as, solution, as awareness increases, and the, the solutions become uh, better and, and more highly adopted, we'll see those levels of mobile actualization increase. Um, and that's because access to anytime, anywhere data is a higher priority to employees and enterprises alike. So uh, in other words, companies and people are gonna be looking to co-opt the technology as much as possible. And the best practices around it will evolve and, and are, are evolving and, and thus it would be easier to, to manage work and personal um, than it already is right now. And, and to the benefit of both people and employees, presumably. And that is everything. And before we go, or before I take questions, rather, I wanted to mention uh, the Unified Endpoint Management Trend Study that we're uh, that we're that we're is in development and that we're uh, looking for sponsors for at the moment. And it's it's a great it's a study that will help assess the adoption not just of Unified Endpoint Management but also help uh, enable vendors with their efforts to uh, see the market as well too with solutions that will, uh, with, with 
go-to-market solutions that will help drive products as well too. And so that will be getting, that will be starting at the end of next year, or excuse me, that will be starting next year and it will uh, be targeted at a variety of IT managers. The, the survey itself, uh, the market intelligence bit will be targeted at C-level executives, IT managers as examples of people that we're going to speak to. And it is a European study, uh, but looking at specific countries, UK, Germany, and France um, as, as examples of, of where of countries or the, the target countries that we're going to be looking at for the study. And just an example of some of the questions that we're going to be asking. This, these are not baked by any means, but a, a good example of, of the kind of intelligence that we're going to seek and that will be incorporated into the go-to-market solutions that I mentioned before. And just some of the benefits, uh, the added value for sponsors uh, before you. Um, marketing and sales support and the thought leadership and branding will help uh, vendors that are looking to advance their UEM solutions that, uh, and, and so the, the, the seeds, so the market with their seeds, if you will. Uh, these are the, the, the different value adds that they can have. So thank you, Kevin. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, Kevin, for the presentation. Um, before, I would like um, to ask the participants if they have any questions regarding the webinar. Invite you to use the chatter box on the right-hand side. And Kevin, um, I just got one question, uh, uh, and it is the question, could you please specify the difference between device and endpoint? Uh, I, I think you can use them interchangeably, really, in many instances. Is there a, an, end, an endpoint is often referred to, it, it is, is used more generally speaking, so an endpoint, anything that connects to the network, whereas a device typically is, I mean, and, and I've seen them used different ways, but a device can often be, and typically is, of the more mobile variety. So when people say device today, they're thinking of a connected device, one, typically under 10 inches in size. If you think about the screen size that connects to a, a network, whether it's a corporate or a, a, a mobile network, a cellular network as well too. Whereas an endpoint would be typically used or often used more generally speaking. So you would have, it could be a PC, a, a station, or it could be a, a desktop computer. But, and it might even be a server depending on who you're talking to. Okay, thank you. So I think uh, at the moment we don't have any further questions. So you will all receive um, a mailing afterwards um, with a link to the recording and also to the slides. And ye, you invited to ask your questions afterwards to Kevin or me just on our homepage, pscaonline.com. And if there are no more questions for today, oh, I just got one. Um, the question is, why don't you consider VMware AirWatch as an EMM vendor? Well, they very much are an EMM vendor. It's EMM, they're not EMM centric though. And so VMware AirWatch is really part of Dell now and it's not mobile first. It's not EMM first and EMM only. So it's part of a larger play, it's part of a larger company and a and, uh, larger product portfolio, if you will, as well, too. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, any more questions? Uh, not at the moment. So, Kevin, if you want to add something um, on your presentation, I think it was really interesting for today. I would thank you for this. Yeah, th thank you for everyone's time and I do appreciate the, the questions and I look forward to talking about unified endpoint management and, and enterprise mobility with everyone that's attended and others uh, in the near future. Okay, so thank you very much to all um, and have a great day. Bye.